We need these inspiring words, and we need it from someone who's done it before. And certainly, Don, we're going to rely on you helping us to think about how we move forward this campaign. So there are some important messages that's coming. I can show you that this is gathering energy, endorsement, support. I'm going to turn over to Tom Nasca to introduce some of the speakers who's publicly committed to helping us, and then also in reviewing how many people have signed up for this movement. Tom, over to you. Well, good morning, everyone, both in Washington and across the country. Uh, my name is Tom Nask, and I have the privilege of serving as the co-chair of the Action Collaborative, along with Dr. Zhao Kirch and Murthy. Uh, this more than six-year effort has built to a crescendo in our call to action in a national movement to enhance and protect clinician well-being and resilience, all with the ultimate goal of enhancement and protection of the well-being of our patients those we, who we all promise to serve. Uh, the pre-pandemic burdens placed on those who provide care and the impact of those burdens on their well-being have been magnified during this pandemic. All of those involved in providing or supporting patient care, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, deserve our honor and respect. And I can think of no greater demonstration of gratitude for the collective efforts than to marshal the collective will and expertise of academia, government, the institutions of our professions, healthcare providers, information systems designers, and system scientists in pursuit of regulatory infrastructure policy and cultural change required to enhance and protect the well being of the healthcare workforce and our patients. Last June, the Action Collaborative heard from three of many groups and individuals actively engaged in this important work. I'll just highlight two. Ernest Grant, president of the American Nurses Association, shared his organization's efforts, which included efforts to measure nurse burnout at a national level, to reach out to nurses with educational tools and information related to the impact of the pandemic on nurse well-being, and to reduce the stigma and licensing barriers associated with nurses seeking psychologic support. He spoke passionately about the efforts of the profession to enhance diversity in our healthcare workforce in order to more effectively meet the needs of those we serve. He closed with a call for all of us to work together to support a healthy workforce in order to meet the needs of our patients. Jeffrey Woods, a second year medical student at the Mayo Clinic Alex School of Medicine, brought us the perspectives of our future clinicians. He brought the energy and clear vision of one coming to the profession after a career of service in well being and resilience. He articulated the desire he shared with all students in the health professions to serve others and the pressures brought about by the environment within which they learn to and form their professional identities. He spoke passionately about the need to see diversity in the workforce in order to serve the needs of a diverse population. And he spoke with gratitude and encouragement for the efforts of the Action Collaborative to enhance the clinical learning environment. These are just two examples of individuals and organizational efforts towards achievement of workforce well being. Joining us today by video are three luminaries who are not only supportive of this effort, but are also actively seeking solutions to these challenges. The first speaker you will see in the video is David Rue, the Global Chief Medical Officer and Vice President for Healthcare at Microsoft. Our second speaker is Andrea Borende Kitts, a former NASA aerospace engineer and now a patient advocate for the Rescue Lung Society. And the third to appear in the video is Jessica Perlo, Director of the IHI. Together, they provide an energizing commitment to our shared future. If we could have the video, please. Hi, my name is David Rue, and I'm the Global Chief Medical Officer for Microsoft. I'm a physician, a technologist, and a health services researcher, and I've spent the past 25 years studying how technology improves health outcomes, specifically access to care, 
quality of care, patient safety, and finding ways that we can improve the experience for both patients and providers. Hello, my name is Andrea Barani Kitts. I'm a retired aerospace engineer turned patient advocate after losing my husband to lung cancer. Hi, my name is Jessica Perlo, and I'm joining you from the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. We're a quality and safety organization, and there is no bigger threat to those aims than the well being of our workforce. Well, we all know that healthcare doesn't work without our clinicians. And unfortunately, our clinicians are leaving the practice at an alarming rate. They're burned out, they're overworked, they're frustrated, they're angry, and they're underappreciated. Well, technology has helped us to be able to digitize the medical record. It's also helped us be able to improve communications between patients and providers. Now's the time for us to refocus our efforts to let technology work better for our clinicians. We need technology to help decrease the administrative workloads that clinicians face on a daily basis such as documenting into the electronic health record and filling out paperwork. Patients, patient advocates, and patient advocacy organizations need to help raise awareness with the general public about the National Plan for Health Worker Wellbeing. We also need to participate in implementing the National Plan elements, providing input from a patient perspective especially in the areas of addressing compliance and regulatory and policy barriers and in design of effective technology tools. At IHI, we are and have been committed to this journey from the start by participating in the collaborative, contributing to thought leadership, and by harnessing the power of improvement science to offer proven tools and methods to reconnect the workforce to our values and bring a greater sense of joy and purpose. This year, we have three exciting new commitments underway in alignment with this action plan. The first is in partnership with George Washington University. It's the Workplace Change Collaborative. This is a HRSA funded center focused on supporting the 44 health and public safety workforce and training grantees in their efforts to promote wellness, reduce burnout, and create better work and learning environments. This three-year endeavor was made possible through the Lorna Breen Act, and it's the first of its kind. For the Workplace Change Collaborative, this involves running an IHI Breakthrough Series co Collaborative to support grantee success. We're also contributing thought leadership on moral injury and burnout, supporting activities that improve the field's understanding of the importance of system level changes, and ulti ultimately aiming to make an impact on the workforce. The second commitment is a course we're offering at IHI this spring on leadership for workforce well-being. This course is for existing and emerging leaders of all disciplines and professions who are tasked with supporting workforce well-being in their organizations and health systems. It's focused on changing the narrative around the work and offering a quality improvement and solutions focused lens to building trust and getting results for workforce well-being. Finally, this year we're going to be launching a national initiative for health equity. IHI and the American Medical Association are co-launching this national initiative that will bring together multiple sectors and partners with a shared vision to transform the healthcare ecosystem. Our strategic advisors include Race Forward, Groundwater Institute, the American Hospital Association, and a growing number of community, equity, and healthcare organizations. Together, we envision a world in which all people, particularly historically marginalized people, have the power, conditions, and resources to achieve optimal health and well-being. Well, in terms of the impact that this national plan will make for our field and for healthcare workers, the National Academy of Medicine's national plan provides an overview of strategies to address this issue, and it includes both technology as well as non-technology approaches. And it's my hope that this national plan will provide the framework for how we address this pressing and complex issue. However, it's really up to all of us, including my colleagues in the tech industry, to be able to work together to help solve this problem. This action plan, along with actions from the federal government this year, with the passage of the Lorna Breen Healthcare Provider Protection Act and the release of the Surgeon General's Advisory on Health Worker Burnout, have started a new national movement for workforce well-being. We also need to join with other stakeholders in advocating for regulatory and policy changes to help reduce barriers for health workers, as these also have a big impact on patients. We need to make sure the public remembers the heroic efforts of health workers during the pandemic to provide care for patients 
with sacrifices and risks to their own lives and to their families to save others. We need to help the public understand that their health and safety depends on having healthcare professionals who are healthy and well cared for so they can provide the best care to their patients. We're in the midst of a crisis, a healthcare workforce crisis, and we need to act with the same level of urgency that we have with other crises through innovation, collaboration, and a renewed focus to help the clinicians. We can overcome this. I'm imagining a world where neither health workers or patients have to navigate complicated non-value-added processes. A world where prior authorization is limited to the few situations where it's needed for patient safety instead of for institutional billing and profits. A world where in-person and virtual care are reimbursed, easy to schedule and intuitive to use. I want a world where clinicians can preside, prescribe the appropriate services to address the social determinants of health, leading to better outcomes and reducing health disparities. A world where health workers are able to sit down and talk to patients without a computer interface in the way. I imagine a world where individuals of all colors and backgrounds are represented in the healthcare workforce where each patient is able to find someone who understands them and makes them feel comfortable during their most vulnerable times. That is the world I want to live in and to help create. We invite all of you to join us in these commitments. They are for all disciplines and professions, and now is the time for collective action. that all of us recognizing the realities that Dr. Berwick enumerated to do our own part to commit to the vision of the national movement and make it a reality. We must commit to build systems of care and leadership in those systems that nurture a culture that supports and strengthens our well-being. This is essential not only for the well-being of our workforce, it is essential in order to bring our whole selves to the care of the patients we pledge to serve and to prepare the next generation of caregivers to live a life of fulfillment and meaning in service of all in our society. Change can happen. While individual effort, courage, and humility are required, this work can only be accomplished through teamwork, partnership, and collaboration in many dimensions, as you heard in earlier presentations. And equal or perhaps even more importantly, we need teamwork and collaboration throughout each site of care, whether a large institution, a large group practice, or an individual provider practice. Most of all, though, we need personal commitment of each of us to do the right thing for the right reason, even when it does not appear to be in our own self-interest, in order to achieve the infrastructure, the systems, the policy, and ultimately the culture that supports the well-being of all involved in supporting and caring for the health and well-being of our society. I encourage and implore you to be involved and stay involved in this effort. The task is large, the journey is long, but the benefits are incalculable. It's now my privilege to turn the meeting back to the president of the National Academy of Medicine, my colleague and friend, Victor Zhao, for his closing remarks. Victor? <laughs> 